Hello, my name is Krzysztof Krawczyk and I work at a company called Lumito. We are located in Lund in Sweden. Thank you for visiting our poster titled Upconversion Nanoparticles as a tool for tissue evaluation with multiplexing and machine learning potential. We are developing a novel technology based on upconversion nanoparticles, which have very special properties beneficial for imaging and digital pathology. You can learn more about it on our poster. When comparing our technology with standard DAP-based labeling, you can notice that our images are very clear and we only visualize the marker of interest, while the rest of the tissue remains black. Our technology is fully compatible with digital pathology and delivers clear images with multiplexing and quantification potential. Please visit our digital poster and contact us. We'll be happy to speak with you and answer all of your questions. Thank you. Hi. In our preclinical project, we look at whole tumor uh, radiomic features extracted from T2-weighted MRI in 24 mice with orthotopic implanted endometrial cancer. We separated the mice in two groups. Uh, 11 mice uh, received chemotherapy as treatment, and the other group, 13 mice, received a control injection of saline. We scan the mice weekly for five weeks using T2-weighted MRI. We manually segmented the tumors and we extracted radiom radiomic features in Singovia Frontier. And we used lasso statistics to investigate differences between the two groups. We hope you will come and uh, talk to us about uh, our project and poster uh, later today. What do people coming from the same country and tumors have in common? From the outside, they are often classified as one single unit. However, when taking a closer look, we see that they are actually very heterogeneous and there are many ways of grouping them. What is a good way to divide tumors in patient-specific substructures? Subregions in multimodal imaging are largely unexplored, so we have to face two major challenges. First, we don't know how many subregions there are, and second, we have no manual segmentation to train with. Therefore, we use hierarchical clustering and pack the results in a visual analytics tool. The user is able to change the number of subregions and the hierarchical tree resulting from the clustering gives a glance of how regions are split up. Visual exploration, validity measures and region characterization support the expert during analysis. I am Tanya and I've been working on this project together with Eric, Ingrid and Nöske this summer. If you want to know more about the technology, challenges and future work, we are happy to show and explain you our virtual poster. Cancer is globally the second leading cause of death. Visual cohort analysis tools can support to develop targeted treatment strategies in cancer. However, the data of cervical cancer patients are gathered over a long period of time and only standardized for the last few years. Thus, building upon the cohort analysis tool by Mert and colleagues, our approach provides users more exploration freedom to find complex relations by enabling double or single axis dimensionality reduction combined with multiple linked views and group comparison extensions. To see this combination in action, come by our chat room. Hello, my name is Jakub Jurek 
and I'm happy to introduce our experiment. Quantitative imaging, allowing the doctors to measure different properties of tissues, can be thought of as the future of medicine. To characterize a prostate tumor, for example, we would like to know its structural properties, like shape or volume, and its physiological properties, such as perfusion or diffusion measures. With modern magnetic resonance imaging techniques, we can get insight into both structural and functional properties of tissues. However, do these images have sufficient spatial resolution, which is the key property of image quality? To date, many 3D images are collected as stacks of thick slices, leading to the deterioration of both image quality and the accuracy of extracted measures. In our previous study, we showed how deep learning models, trained on simulated structural images, can help to reconstruct super-resolution images using information from the acquired low-resolution ones. In our current study, we make the first step to extend that idea to functional imaging by simulating diffusion-weighted images. We achieve that using a diffusion phantom, its computer-aided design model, and MRI signal equations. The resulting images of the phantom are visually compared to the real, acquired ones. Our poster, number 105, describes the details of the simulation pipeline. We invite you to our virtual stand to get encountered. Thank you for attention. In this project, we have looked at the relation between macro and micro scale radiomic features. In the macro scale, we have looked at ADC images generated from mice implanted with orthotopic endometrial cancer. So after manual tumor segmentation, we extracted radiomic features that we have compared to the microscopy images taken from the tumors straight after the mice were sacrificed. So then we look at possible correlations between the radiomic features that were extracted from either the tumor from the microscopy or from the ADC image. So please visit our poster for more discussions uh, about our results. Mild cognitive impairment, MCI, the intermediate stage between cognitively normal and dementia. MCI is characterized by large heterogeneity, both in terms of brain and clinical outcome. While some patients can live with MCI for several years without progressing to dementia, and some even reverse back to normal, unfortunately, 10 to 15% will develop Alzheimer's disease each year. If we could be able to give an individual uh, disease prognosis, that could lead to better targeting treatment options. In our study, we use high dimensional longitudinal neurocognitive data from the Alzheimer's disease neuroimaging initiative, the ADNI database. In our poster, we present some preliminary results and also how we plan to implement a hybrid model, the functional Vandal Forest, proposed by Feshko and colleagues. Our aim is to identify meaningful subgroups of stable MCI, so we can increase the prediction of further individual trajectories. I hope to see you at my poster. Mild cognitive impairment is a diagnostic construct used to define an intermediate state between normal cognition and different forms of dementia. This is, however, a patient group that has proven to be very heterogeneous, and not all patients will show a trajectory where they go on to develop dementia. It is therefore of great importance to identify predictors of different trajectories within this MCI cohort. This motivated the current study in which we will use baseline data on test of cognition, global function, and neuropsychiatric symptoms from a total of 754 MCI subjects 
from, from the Alzheimer's Disease Neuroimaging Initiative. We will investigate differences between one group that remained stable with an MCI diagnosis and one group that converted uh, to AD over the course of the ADMI study. This poster represents a work in progress and in further analysis, we attempt to identify and, and characterize clinical subtypes within this MCI population using a functional random forest machine learning classification model. Hi, this is the Open Anatomy Explorer, a web-based tool for medical education. Learning about the structure of the human body is an essential skill for almost all medical professionals, but a shortage of donated bodies or even in-person teaching during this pandemic can make this more difficult than it has to be. This is why we have collaborated with the University of Ghent to create a tool to allow them to precisely label their 3D surface scans of real specimens and make them available for students to explore. To facilitate this learning, it is easily accessible on the web and provides tools to create a multitude of easily shared quizzes. This allows the tool to both be used as reference material for students while learning, and also providing a tool to set up space repetition exercises and perhaps even for assessment in an exam context one day. There is ongoing work on further extending the projects with features such as more question types, such as orientation questions or freeform questions, as well as linking label regions to knowledge bases to make data exploration more comprehensive. In addition, we plan to add volume rendering of CT scans to also display the interior anatomy of the models and provide context to what you're seeing there. Thank you for watching. Hi, my name is Vilde Brekke and I'm a PhD candidate at Bergen Center for Brain Plasticity. In this pre-registered study, we combined a concentrated psychological treatment for obsessive compulsive disorder with diffusion tensor imaging, hoping to find how changes in symptoms relate to changes in the brain. Our sample of patients of were severely ill before treatment and yet we were unable to detect any significant differences between the patients and the demographically matched control group. After treatment, almost 80% of the patients were greatly improved and in remission, but we did not find any significant changes in the DTI measures. Our findings cast doubt on how useful diffusion tensor imaging is as a biomarker of risk treatment response. We are starting a new treatment study with more participants and comprehensive psychological measures, genetics, epigenetics and imaging to better understand why and how some patients change and others do not after treatment. Thank you. I'm Hildi Lian and I'm a PhD candidate in the Bayern Gynecological Cancer Group. In this project, I focus on endometrial cancer samples from patients with a low FIGO stage. Most of these patients have a good prognosis, but some recur. In this data set of 40 samples, 20 tumors recurred. In order to investigate the different outcome, we use imaging mass cytometry to look at tumor heterogeneity by investigating 27 biomarkers simultaneously. To get the single cell data, we need to segment the images. And this is done by first classifying the pixel into three classes, nuclei, cytoplasm, and background, using a random forest classifier. Probability maps are then generated, which are used in the next segmentation step to create single cell masks. In this poster, I'm showing a representative analysis of a single tumor sample, where we use TCNI and phenograph to cluster the high dimensional single cell data. On the right, phenograph cursors are overlaid on the TCNI map, and on the left, it is overlaid on the sample image. And we see that there are six phenograph clusters that make out six distinct cancer cell population, showing in this si single sample, we have tumor heterogeneity. To conclude, we have already found distinct cellular heterogeneity with a single sample, and hopefully the entire data set will tell us even more related to patient outcome.
Hello, my name is Vettler. Digital interaction with volumetric data is increasing in research, the clinic and industry. In this experiment, we investigated 3D manipulation on 2D screens versus virtual reality. Does Stereopsis improve interaction speed? Here I'm demonstrating the task the participants performed. Solving this task requires navigating in a three-dimensional space, either in virtual reality or on a desktop, and understanding the depth structure of the object. If you would like to know more about this project, please come visit us at poster 130. Hi, my name is Katarzyna Kazimierczak and today I'll be presenting project titled Mapping Task and REST-Related Brain Networks Using Topological Data Analysis. This project is intended to look at dynamic interaction of brain activations occurring alongside task-related upregulations. These dynamics are difficult to predict with the current modeling approaches, therefore new tools and methods are required. For that purpose, we have looked at topological data analysis and tried to develop a pipeline that which would aid in mapping this dynamical landscape. If you have any further questions, please let me know during poster session and see you then! Routine MRI and PET-CT to guide surgical treatment in endometrial cancer. Aim to describe how MRI and PET-CT findings reported in the standard imaging report have guided endometrial cancer treatment in a prospective population-based 10-year cohort. Study design. We included patients admitted for endometrial cancer treatment from 2009 to 2019 that had undergone preoperative MRI and in most cases a preoperative PET-CT. We performed the patient file review to answer the question how imaging affected the addition of lymphadenectomy to primary surgery. We found that in patients with preoperative high-risk histology, MRI excluding deep myometrial invasion reclassified the tumor from high to intermediate risk in 18 of 50 patients, and in three of these, lymphadenectomy was ultimately omitted. For low and intermediate risk patients without additional risk based on imaging, lymphadenectomy rates were 27% and 62% respectively. Of 78 patients with upstaging findings on MRI, 62 underwent lymphadenectomy, and of 22 patients with upstaging findings on PET-CT, 20 underwent lymphadenectomy. Conclusions. Preoperative PET-CT and MRI findings help achieve low lymphadenectomy rates in low-risk patients. However, imaging findings indicating reduced risk rarely led to change in the treatment algorithm. Thank you for your attention. Hi everyone, uh, I'm going to present a poster about multilingual tumor segmentation using bimodal MRI recordings such as T1 weighted and T1 weighted post gadolinium contrast images. The tumor regions we have considered here are tumor core, whole tumor and enhancing tumor. Ideally T1, T1 contrast, T2 and flare images are used to segment brain tumor regions. All four MRI recordings may not be suitable for proper core registration. Also T2 and flare recordings take longer time to acquire. So we need an efficient model trained on T1 and T1 contrast images only. We have chosen a robust self-adapting adapting 3D noni unit uh, built upon vanilla 3D unit. Uh, the 3D NN unit is robust over anisotropic imaging data. Uh, we have used T1, T1 contrast images and their corresponding marks from uh, Brain tumor segmentation challenge 2020 to train our model. It's evident from figure three that our 3D and an unit based model performs better than the general 3D unit based model. From figure two, we can see that our trained model detect uh, two disconnected regions well. Uh, the tumor core and then enhancing tumor uh, segmentation perform similar to the model trained on uh, multimodal MRI, but the whole tumor, which includes the edema, provides less dice score. Thank you for your kind attention.